Hi guys, my name is Ronki Adekombi, aka Anti Rubro, your most impressive storyteller. I love to speak, I love to write, amongst many other things. Welcome to Storytelling Basics, where I talk about the elementary things you need to know about storytelling. But today, before I get to my storytelling basics, permit me to read something to you something i read in this book i am holding i know a lot of you have read the book before so consider what i'm going to read to you as a refresher course the book is called success through a positive mental attitude by napoleon hill i would like to read the story of a man who met with some of the most severe problem a human being can experience. As we read the story, we will see how he applied the PM made as positive mental attitude to the solution of the difficulty he encountered until he achieved ultimate victory. He met his challenge to change with PMA at Leavenworth Penny Tentiary, which is another word for a detention center or a prison. This man was born in poverty. While in grade school, he sold newspapers and shined shoes in and around the salons on Seattle's waterfront to help his mother meet expenses. Later, he became a cabin boy on an Alaskan freighter during the summer months. After he finished high school at the age of 17, he left home. He became one of the horde of hobos which rode the rails and traveled to every part of the United States. His companions were hard-beaten men. He gambled, associated with riffraff, men of the so-called border legion, soldiers of fortune, fugitives, smugglers, cattle thieves and the like were his companions. He joined the forces of Panacho Villa in Mexico. You can't skate close to those extra legal operations without knowing about them, even if you have nothing to do with them, Charles Watt said. My mistake was being with the wrong companions. My major sin was associating with people who were bad. From time to time, he won large sums in gambling, and then he lost them. Finally, he was arrested for narcotics smuggling. He was tried and convicted. Yet, throughout his life, that's throughout the sentence, Charles Ward maintained his innocence of the charge on which he was convicted. Charles Ward was 34 years old when he entered Leavenworth. He had never been in jail before in spite of his associates and he was embittered. He vowed that no prison was strong enough to hold him. He looked for a chance to make a break. Then something happened. Charles chose to change his attitude from negative to positive. He met the challenge to change with PME. Something within him told him to stop being hostile and to become the best prisoner in the prison. From that very moment, the entire tide of his life began to flow in the direction most favorable to him, for him. By the simple change from negative to positive thinking, Charles Ward began to master himself. He changed the direction of his aggressive personality. He forgave the federal agent who had brought about his plight. He quit hating the judge who sentenced him. He took a real good look at the child's word of the past and he resolved to avoid the very appearance of evil in the future. He looked around for ways to make his stay in prison as pleasant as possible. First, he asked himself some questions and for the first time in his adult life, he found his answers in books, particularly the book. In his prison cell, he began to read the Bible. He read it and reread it. Thereafter and up to the date of his death at the age of 73, he read the Bible every day for inspiration, guidance, and help. Because of his changing attitude and consequently his behavior, 
he began to attract favorable notice of the prison officials. And one day, a convict clerk told him about a trustee in the power plant that was to be released in three months. Charles Ward knew little about electricity, but there were books on electricity in the prison library. So he studied, he learned what these books could teach him. At the end of three months, Charles was ready. He applied for the job. Something about his mannerism and his tone of voice impressed the deputy warden. That something was earnestness and sincerity of Charlie Ward's positive mental attitude. He got the job. Because he continued to study and work with PMA, Charles Ward became the superintendent of the police power plant with 150 men under him. Now we are talking about a prisoner. He tried to inspire each one of them to make the best of their situations. When Herbert Hughes Biglow, president of Brown and Biglow at St. Paul, Minnesota, arrived at Leavenworth on a conviction of tax income, income tax evasion, Charles Ward also bef befriended him. In fact, he went out of his way to motivate Biglow to adjust himself to his environment. Biglow was so appreciative of Charles' friendship and help that as his prison term approached its end, he told Charles, You have been good to me. When you get out, come to St. Paul. We will have a job for you. Five weeks later, Charles was released from prison and he went to St. Paul. As he had promised, Mr. Biglow gave Charlie a job. He was given work as a laborer at $25 a week. After a year, he became a superintendent. Finally, Charles was made vice president and general manager. In September 1933, Charles Ward was made the president of Brown and Bigelow. And he continued in this capacity until his death in the summer of 1959. Now, one of the most impressive things about this man was after his employment, he continued perhaps one of his most unusual and commendable, activity, commendable activities was his employment of over 500 men and women who had come from prison. He continued, they continued their rehabilitation under his stern and understanding guidance and inspiration. He never forgot that he too had been a convict. He wore his tag on his bracelet and his old prison number as a symbol. Wow. Having a positive mental attitude is very important. It helps you put things in the right perspective. You know, what happens to us is never as important as the way we interpret and perceive those things. Selah. On today's episode of Storytelling Basics, we want to talk about the different types of stories. There are different types of stories and these form the basis for the different types in most art-related works. For example, in the movie industry, the different stories give birth to different genres. The types of story dictates how the story is told. There are sad stories which form the basis for tragedy. And there are humorous or happy stories which form the basis for comedy genre. There are informative stories which form the basis for our documentaries. And there are futuristic stories or tall tale which form the basics for what we call science fiction. However, one of these story types must hold a predominant role. You cannot write a movie where every time every type of story occurs to the same degree also the movie must be excited with the predominant movie type imagine a movie that begins with two people who are very much in love and then the movie ends with the couple dying in a, a car accident this is obviously tragic although we have seen a combination of happy and sad story the genre of this story is actually tragedy even though it's a combination of hard and happy moments but they exited it with a sad story meaning that the movie is tragedy the genre is tragedy even a tragic comedy movie cannot have tragedy and comedy to the same degree 
the storyteller will be seen as an irresponsible and a dismissive story writer. So in our quest to become better storytellers, we must understand how to combine the different stories and come up with a story meal palatable to suit your listeners' obviously sophisticated taste buds. Till we meet next week, I want you to take absolute care of yourself and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to Ruru and also follow me on my Instagram page, Adironke Addicts. And I hope you were able to learn something from the story I read from my book, Success Through Positive Mental Attitude by Napoleon Hill. Take care of yourself. I love you. Bye.